in the last two videos we were um, looking at some of the mathematical aspects that which we are that we are going to utilize in this course mainly uh, they covered matrices and quadratic forms and um, we saw that if you have two quadratic forms and one of which is um, a positive definite then we can s put these two quadratic forms as sum of squares and one of them which corresponds to uh, to the positive definite quadratic form that can not only be put as a sum of squares but also the coefficients which appear uh, in front of these squares they can be chosen to be unity okay so that is what we were talking last time and today we are going to start a new topic which um, we'll spend some time with and this is oscillations okay so that's what we are going to do now okay so I will start this lecture by defining a natural system so generally when we are um, dealing with problems it will often happen that we do not need to have time appearing explicitly in the transformations when you go from Cartesian to generalized coordinates okay so the time does not appear explicitly there that hop, uh, hap uh, happens very often also the applied forces the forces that are under your control not not the ones arising due to constraints the applied forces will be conservative this also will be a frequent uh, occurrence and that constraints will also be very often holonomic okay meaning that you will be able to um, from the outset um, get rid of the, ex the the degrees of freedom which are not independent so you'll be able to utilize the equations of constraints and then um, write down your system only involving independent coordinates so these three conditions are very frequent and if a system obeys this or if, if a system is um, um, yeah obeying this then you say that the system is a natural system so let me write down what I have said just now so natural system okay and the the conditions are the following a the trans or maybe I should write even without this so what we are saying is if you look at Q uh, relation between the Cartesian coordinates and the generalized coordinates this does not involve time explicitly okay that's one second is forces are conservative okay and third constraints are holonomic okay if these three conditions are holding true then we say that the system is a natural system okay and for a natural system clearly the kinetic energy which is in general a sum of three terms one is of degree zero in generalized velocities t0 that is what we have been saying another is t1 linear in generalized velocities and t2 quadratic in generalized velocities but for a natural system you will have only t2 for a natural system the kinetic energy is only contains only t2 okay and the Lagrangian will be of the form
of the following form. So your L will be, so let me write down explicitly T2, it will be half Aij, which in general depends on all the coordinates Qis, which I am uh, denoting them by Q. And then you have Qi dot Qj dot minus the potential energy, which depends on again all the generalized coordinates. Let me put a summation. 1 to the total number of degrees of freedom. Okay, that's um, the definition of a natural system. Now uh, we want to talk about oscillations and the generic situation is the uh, following. Usually your system would have a equilibrium configuration, meaning if you put your system at rest, so let's say all the generalized velocities are zero, and if you put your system uh, in, in such a configuration, and if system remains in this configuration, meaning it always, rem I mean, it, all the generalized velocities remain zero with time, so they, they do not change, they keep, uh, remain zero, then you say that the system is in, um, is, a, is in an equilibrium configuration. I mean, the co configuration may be stable or unstable, but that's uh, what you ex expect, that your system is not going to move away from it if that is an equilibrium configuration, okay? So let me uh, write this down. E, Q, B, R, I, U, M. So what I'm saying is, let's start with all the generalized velocities, Q, I, all of them are zero for all I, Q, I dot. Okay, generalized velocities, they're all zero. And if, so that's how you uh, start, and if Q, I dots remain zero, at any other time, so let's say this you have started at equal to zero. So at equal to zero, you have uh, put the system in such a form that all the generalized velocities are zero. And if at any later time, this still remains true, then it means that your system is residing at an equilibrium uh, point, okay? For any t, greater than zero, then we say, then the system is in equilibrium. Let's take a very familiar example. Let's say I have a um, a pendulum, okay? And your generalized coordinate is theta in this case, right? Now if you take this mass and put it here, vertically downwards, and put it at rest, then it will remain there, it will not move, right? So at any later time t, it will still be lying there. But if you give it some velocity there, at the, at the uh, lowest position, then of course it's not going to stay there. So clearly you see that this point will be an equilibrium point because this condition is holding true, okay? So that's good. Now we need to find out the condition for equilibrium. So this is what we expect for, I mean this is the definition uh, for uh, the system being in equilibrium, but what else needs to be satisfied for this to hold true? That's what we want to look at. So we start by looking at Euler-Lagrange equation because that is what tells you how the system is going to evolve with time. So Euler-Lagrange equation for a natural system is d over dt 
you, here you have generally del L over del Q dot, but L has a U, and that U does not depend on generalized velocities, okay? That's the uh, part of definition of a natural system. So I have only the kinetic energy term here. Q I dot, okay? And then I have just split the L into T and U and written down like this. Right? That's your Euler Lagrange equation. If you combine these two, this becomes del L over del QI. Okay. Now let's uh, look at this thing. Let's see what del T over del Q I dot is. So this piece. This will be just um, A I K Q K dot. Okay. What I've done is taken this one, this this piece and uh, have uh, differentiated it with Q um, one of the with the generalized velocity Q I dot. So that's what you get. Also, let's see what del T over del Q I is. Now I'm looking at this one. First, I had looked at this one, this piece. Now I'm looking at this one. Now this is um, del T over del Q I. So the Q dependence is only in A. These are the velocities. So if I take a derivative, I get you have a half del A I. Let me put J. In fact, I should put yeah J and K. I have changed the uh, indices because they are dummy and del Q I that's fine this piece and it's contracted with Q J dot Q K dot right okay now clearly if I put Q K dot for all times to be zero okay then both these terms are going to vanish so if q k dot is equal to 0 all t and k is not just one particular but all the coordinates so k runs from 1 to n okay then your this piece and this piece they are both zero right so del t over del q i dot is zero for all times and del t over del q i is also zero. Which means that this piece is gone and that piece is gone. Now this entire equation will be satisfied. Okay, it has to be said it will get satisfied only if del u over del q that also is zero otherwise this will not be satisfied right which implies that the system to be in a con uh, in an equilibrium configuration we had the condition that del u over del q i is zero okay that's the condition we get which means we need to look at the function u and search at which point Q, Q is um, Q1, Q2 and all, okay, at what point that derivative is zero and that point will be called an equilibrium point. And clearly this is a point of extremum where the potential will take its either maximum or minimum value. Okay, so as I said, I'm not sure what I said, but uh, there are two things which can happen. Whatever point Q0 you get from here, okay, where this condition is satisfied, this Q0 could be either a stable equilibrium
or an unstable equilibrium. And what do I mean by that? I mean by that the following. So it may happen that you uh, put your system at the equilibrium place where this condition del u over del q is zero, okay? And if you put it there at rest, it, re it remains there forever, okay? That's, that's fine. But let's say you uh, displace your system from that position by an infinitesimal amount, okay, a little bit. Now, if you do so, there are two things, there are two possibilities which can happen. One is that the system moves away from it a bit, but it uh, tries to come back, okay? So it, it remains in the vicinity of that point Q0. It doesn't go away from there. So it, it, it remains in the neighborhood of that point Q0. If that is the case, your um, equilibrium configuration is a stable configuration, okay? It's stable, it remains there. Your system remains there. But it may also happen that even though you can place a system there at rest, but if you give a small infinitesimal a nudge to the system which takes it away from that point, system does not come back to this place. So it, it goes further away, okay? It doesn't want to return there. For example, you can, a very simple example could be, uh, think of a sphere. If you put the ball on the top, uh, take a ball and put on the top, if you leave it, leave it at the rest there, it will remain there. But if you give it a slight displacement, it, it's not going to come back. But if you take a, um, a bowl and then you put the thing at the equilibrium place at the center, if you leave it, it remains there. But if you uh, take it away from there, it remains in the vicinity of that point, okay? It doesn't go away uh, far. So that is what generally, um, stable and unstable equilibrium are. Maybe I should write that down. Um, where, what happened? Yeah. Stable equilibrium. Okay. And infinitesimal displacement away from Q0 produces a motion that keeps it in the vicinity, okay, in the vicinity of Q0. And clearly, if you have unstable, it will take it away from from Q0. It doesn't. It doesn't return back. It just goes further away. And depending on what is happening um, further away from that point Q0, your system may keep going away forever. Or let's say it has another maximum minimum, so it can do something else. But as far as the uh, neighborhood of point Q0 is concerned. These are the statements that we can make. Now, of course, we are going to be interested in um, stable equilibrium, okay? So, henceforth, I'll talk only about stable equilibrium. Stable equilibrium. Now, what I can do is, without loss of any generality, I can choose that point where you have the equilibrium, the stable equilibrium, as to be the origin of your coordinate system. So I say that all the Qs are zero there. That's basically choosing the origin of your coordinate system. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So without loss of generality. I can set Q naught to be zero, okay? Which basically means that I'm saying Q i, uh, let's say, how do I put it? Q i, mm, okay. Q 
i0 equal to 0 for all i. Okay, here q0 stands for the entire set of uh, coordinates. That is good. Um, now I'm going to be interested in small displacement around q0. You see, if your displacement is large, then just knowing um, about the potential in the vicinity of q0 is not sufficient, right? Then what is happening globally will determine the motion. For example, if there is another minimum somewhere, and if you displace it by a large amount, your system may end up in this other minimum. Okay, so we are interested in small displacements. And if I'm looking at small displacements, what I can do is I can take the potential and do a Taylor expansion around this point Q0, which I call the origin now, okay? Uh, because I've said that already to zero. So I will do a Taylor expansion for small displacements. Okay, I'll do a Taylor expansion. So U of Q is u of zero, so I'm expanding around the point zero, plus del u over del q k, evaluated at the origin, q k, that's the displacement from the origin, q k is now a uh, displacement from the origin, okay? So that's one advantage of putting everything at origin. So I don't have to write QK minus something. Plus half, you should take a second derivative of U with respect to uh, QJ, QK. And again, this thing should be evaluated at the origin. So these two numbers are now, uh, these two quantities are numbers. They are not functions of Qs anymore. They are just some numbers which are determined by your system, okay? And then you have Qj, Qk, plus you'll have all other terms. So I will write them as uh, order Q, um, cube, let me, let me just put Q. Okay, so I'm uh, by this symbol, I mean, I'm dropping, I mean, all these terms which I'm not showing, they are all order cube or higher. Okay, depending on the system, some of the terms may vanish also, some of the orders may be absent, but generically, this is um, what the statement would be. Okay, now I can do another thing. I can set u of zero to be zero. See, potential, um, you can, the absolute value of potentials are not important that you, I believe, already know. It's only the relative differences which are important. So I can set that the potential energy of the system is zero when it is at the equilibrium configuration. So that choice I can make. So let me make that choice. And I set this to be zero. Also because I'm saying that my system is in equilibrium, I've already seen that that translates to saying that the first order derivative of u vanishes, right? That's what we have seen a couple of minutes ago. So I put this to be zero. See, this follows from our requirement of um, equilibrium. And this is a choice I have made. You are free not to choose this. You may keep it something else, non-zero. Nothing will change, right? But anyway, things look simpler if I make this choice. And with this choice, I am left with this term, which is quadratic in Q and higher order terms. So with that, I get U of Q. I will write this as, I believe, um, yeah. I think it will be half. This I call U, J, K. So these are just numbers. Q, K, Q, J, Q, K, plus 
higher order terms which I am denoting by order q cube ok now clearly the matrix elements u j k so you you can think of as a uh, n cross n matrix right see your if you look at j and k they run from 1 to n that's the number of uh, degrees of freedom you have so this u j k if you look at them this is these are n square numbers total n square in number and they form a matrix and the matrix we call u whose entries are this u11 and so forth okay u12 etc and clearly the matrix is symmetric because of this uh, definition of it if you interchange the two derivatives it doesn't change because these derivatives de uh, differentiations commute okay so u is a symmetric matrix is a symmetric matrix Re real symmetric matrix okay that's good now let's look at the kinetic energy term before I do that okay that's fine now I look at okay maybe I should write it down u j k is symmetric because uh, del q j del q k this order does not matter okay that's good now let's look at the kinetic term and what did we have we had t equals half and you had a summation over i and j a i j it depends on q's in general and q i dot q j dot that's the form for a natural system as we said now what I'm going to do is I'm going to again do a Taylor expansion around origin where your system is in equilibrium okay so I write it as a i j q equals a i j of 0 plus over delta q k evaluated at the origin q k plus higher order terms Okay, so all the terms will be there that is good now okay that's fine now let's look at our uh, Euler Lagrange equations of motion so Lagrangian is there but I want to also look at the equations of motion and my intention is to see how much of this expansion okay so up to what order I should keep both in the kinetic energy and uh, the potential energy terms so that my equations of motion are linear okay so I'm going to be in, I, 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 I'm interested in looking at the system in a linear approximation and the reason being that I can solve it without running into any complications uh, th th that system I will be able to solve so I want to see up to what uh, order I should keep terms in T and up to what orders I should keep terms in U so that my equations of motion are linear okay that's what um, I want to do and clearly if I do so it will not describe um, the true motion of my system but it will capture the most general features hopefully if I remain in the vicinity of the equilibrium position okay so that's what we want to do and uh, that's 
what we are going to do now so let's look at equations of motion so we are interested in looking at at uh, linear approximation of equations of motion okay um, maybe I should just tell you I, I'll just um, okay I will le leave it as an exercise I do not wish to do that simple uh, uh, steps here so exercise uh, show that if you if you retain or if you approximate let's say um, if you approximate the potential energy to the following where was it here if you keep only this term and drop all other terms which are here okay so um, half u i j q i q j and drop all other terms in potential energy and if you take t to be just just this first piece okay so i put half a i j and q i dot q j dot if you do so and throw all these terms okay then your equations of motion that you are going to get for this system will be linear okay um, and that that's not difficult to check so I will encourage you to do so so under linear approximation I would I would uh, before writing that I would write instead of a i j I will write half t i j okay so this matrix made by these elements a i j zero these numbers I will just denote by t i j so that it sounds uh, a bit bit like kinetic energy matrix or sounds like kinetic energy matrix okay so under linear approximation any system see I am not making any assumptions about the system any system you can approximate uh, its Lagrangian by this which is nice this summation over i and j is implied q j dot t minus u so you have half u i j q i q j and I have dropped all the other terms let me put summation over i and j that's nice so this will be our starting point uh, for uh, for analyzing any system uh, near its equilibrium configuration and let me just uh, mention that your T ij this is symmetric matrix your u symmetric okay and yes so next time we will start looking at the system but now you can already uh, try to bring in what we talk wh what we were talking about in the um, in the last two videos where we were talking about some mathematics you see we, what you have in front of you is a quadratic form here and another quadratic form here okay so we will ask in the next video whether uh, these quadratic forms are positive definite positive semi definite these things we are going to ask and if we were lucky and if we are lucky and we figure out that maybe one of them is positive definite 
then we will do what we learned last time we will put them in diagonal form okay and then you'll see some very um, nice results come out okay that will be the goal for the uh, next video and we'll stop this lecture here so see you then in the next lecture